Hi, welcome to this little series where I'll be showing you how to build a science fiction corridor in Blender and display it inside of Unity. Realistically, it doesn't matter what engine you use, but I'm going to be using Unity because I'm familiar with it. A lot of what I talk about can be transferred to other software and types of level design as well, because this will mostly be about the theory, concepts and principles of modular design, which are certainly not exclusive to science fiction corridors. But why corridors? The reason is because they've become a kind of signature of sci-fi design in the art community. Certain game studios require applying artists to create sci-fi interiors from given concept art, and it seems that sprawling hard surface interiors and exteriors are always in demand at visual effects companies, as the budget for CG-intensive blockbuster films is gigantic and ever-expanding. Doing sci-fi corridors will also provide us with a good opportunity to talk about the necessities of modularity in game design, such as how pieces can successfully transition and tile together to allow for easy scene construction. But we're also going to talk about things that aren't always covered in tutorials, such as consideration for human scale and making sure that the symmetry of scale is not violated unless necessary for a certain function. We'll also go over the usefulness of kit bashing and the dark side of the kit bash tribes. As well as this, we will discuss the perception of levels of detail and the distribution of shapes based on their size in relation to other detail pieces. At the end of this series, you should hopefully come away with not only new information on how to design science fiction corridors, but also important knowledge on what helps environment design contribute to a larger narrative. What we are not going to be doing in this series is texturing the content, because this series is going to be focused on modeling and level design. If there is interest in a following series exclusively for texturing, then that can be done, but such content would not be accessible for everyone as it would likely rely on some paid software. But for now, we're going to focus on how to design and build a corridor tile set. We're going to kick it off by having a little discussion about form versus function. So here's a question I want you to think about. Is more detail better? It's a subjective question because it entirely depends on what you are looking for and the purpose of what you are building. We're going to mention kit bashing here, and if you don't know what that is, then in a nutshell, it's when you take pieces from somewhere else and bring them together to make something new. Think back to the early days of the science fiction corner of the film industry, where modelers would take individual pieces from physical model kits of quite often military vehicles and reuse them in a creative way to make spaceships instead. For a corridor, if someone kit bashes an unnecessary amount of Griebel models together, it might look really cool and detailed on first glance, but from a performance perspective, it would likely be impractical for a gameplay environment without some heavy considerations for optimization. If you are just looking to make something that looks really complex with many coalescing surfaces, then that's a good way to go about it. Just slap things together until you get something looking cool, it's quick, it's much lower effort than modeling something completely bespoke, and it can give the illusion that a lot of consideration and patience went into the design. But this is where we encounter the problem of form versus function. By slapping random details together, we miss out on an opportunity to make something that contributes to a deeper story. Because when creating realistic game worlds, Concept and environment artists with an appreciation for the game's backstory like to feed clues into the environment that immerse the player and give them a continual illusion that they exist in a rich, fictional world. This is quite often done through the use of a stylistic motif. You can think of a motif as an idea that repeats itself throughout the work. We could take the example of the iconic vaults from the Fallout series, specifically free and onwards. It doesn't matter where you are or what game you're in, if you were thrown into a vault, you would know exactly what series it came from. This is largely thanks to the blue-yellow color scheme that likes to repeat itself in those spaces, and the clinically apocalyptic retro interior design that we've grown so used to. If you've played the new Wolfenstein games, then you'll know that a lot of work went into the environments. They're very visually stimulating to look at, and part of that comes from the creative variety of styles and shaping. They knew that there was a time and a place for both intensely detailed cluttered environments and lesser detailed open spaces. Most importantly, all of this followed a purpose in the story. All of the details were placed for a reason and were intended to assist in the player's immersion. The point that I'm trying to get across is that detail for detail's sake doesn't necessarily add to the quality of a game environment, but detail for the sake of visual storytelling certainly does. And that's what I want you to keep in mind while we look at some examples of sci-fi interior work present on ArtStation. Over here we have Paul Pepera, who was an excellent hard surface modeler. Sadly, he passed away a little while back. He was one of the founders of System Era, the company making Astroneer. 
He had also done some work on Halo 4, and I highly recommend you have a look at his work. ArtStation have made his account into a memorial account, and it's something that I come back to every once in a while just to pay my digital respects. One thing that Paul did really well is give his work a sense of physicality. You can see that quite often he liked to juxtapose hard surfaces with simulated cloth. This is something I've also seen Jerry Perkins doing quite a lot, also known as Master Xeon, who was the inventor of the HardOps plugin for Blender. The best solution for cloth simulation out there right now is definitely Marvelous Designer, but the problem with it is it's quite pricey for hobbyists. They do do a special version on Steam, which is cheaper, but the problem is when they bring out a new version, you won't get an upgrade price like they provide on the standalone version. The new Blender 2.8 is actually seeing some cloth simulation improvements as well, so I might sit down with that one day and see how far I can push it. Over here we have Luke Wilkins who provides a much more grungy, dark sci-fi vibe to their work. This first one is something you can imagine coming straight out of the Alien series, having cables hastily strewn across the floor, the whole place having a dirt covered feel to it and so many places for things to be camouflaged. Spaces like this are designed to make you feel uncomfortable and Wilkins pulls it off really well here. As to whether or not a spaceship or space station would realistically look like this on the inside, that's another question entirely, but it all depends on the creator's vision. We've grown to associate dark, grungy sci-fi with the horror genre, and though there are many people to thank for that, I think it would be a bit weird going through this type of series without mentioning the name Ridley Scott at least once. I've added Jonas and Josh on here because they've tried to create the same piece of work, which is actually an art test for Star Citizen, and I like them both in different ways. I find myself drawn to the individual detail elements on Jonas's work because they're brightly emphasized and more clinical in presentation, whereas in Josh's work everything is presented in a much more generalized and cinematic way. You can get a feel for the mood they were trying to convey to the viewers simply by the framing of the cameras. In Josh's work, detailed elements are more dull in color, whereas the focal point of the screen has become our center of attention. What Sean does well here is something we will take a look at later on, which is the symmetry of scale. What I mean by that is the fact that if we were standing in this corridor, all of the details would feel well proportioned, specifically between the ceiling and the floor. Later on I will demonstrate a mistake I made with my own corridor with the symmetry of scale and how I went about fixing it. Stars has a way of concepting their environments that I really like. Their comic book style line art is both clean and yet also nicely detailed. This is the kind of concept work that modelers love. Line art is so easy to work with and reconstruct because it's very informative of where exactly to put edges. I wanted to throw this piece by Houston Sharp in here because the corridor has a different profile to what we've seen in other pieces. When I say profile, what I mean is the basic geometric shape of the corridor if we were to look at it from front on. What we could see here is that this piece has a hexagonal profile, whereas if we take a look at my older works, we can see a mix of different profiles. But my favorite one to work with is the octagonal profile because it's very symmetrical. If you take out any indications for floor paneling, then you can turn it into a zero-g environment quite easily, whereas profiles with a wider floor edge imply that gravity can only point in one direction. Now why are we talking about this, Curtis? Why haven't we started modeling yet? Don't worry, we'll get there. The reason we're talking a lot about purpose is because when you go off and create your own things, you'll be putting your own twist on it. The purpose behind the work will help you to find a direction if you get stuck with your modeling and don't know where to go next. It's a common problem that new people to modeling face, and it's the equivalent of writer's block. Now admittedly, the work I've been doing for this series does not have a story to back it up, so the environment may feel devoid of human intervention. So as I show you things, I want you to stop every now and again and think to yourself, what would I do instead? What fits my story? Now in preparation, I wanted to see if I was still capable of producing something of an acceptable quality, since last time I did a sci-fi corridor was roughly around a year ago, so I've been worried that I was getting a bit rusty in that domain. It's something that I really wanted to come back to, and these notes on design and modularity are things that I've had to teach a few friends on a number of occasions, so this is an opportunity to put it all down into a consumable and easily repeatable format. So now that we've got an understanding of form versus function going, I'm going to show you what corridor I've been making in preparation for these videos. I spent a couple of days on it, what I decided to try and do was take an octagonal profile and place a raised walkway inside to give it a bit more depth. After day one, I ended up with this simple tileable block out. I wasn't very happy with it, it was quite rudimentary and the scaling was a bit off with the floor plating. But after day two, I ended up with this. As you can see, it's a massive step up as I started to add more layers of detail. I changed the look of the inner walkway so it better matched the scale of the ceiling details. And I messed around with the color grading a bit just for fun as well. 
It's at a point now where it's detailed enough to be interesting, but there's also a lot of room for improvement. This current scene is going to act as our anchor for the videos. In the first part of the series, I will show you the basic steps of how I got to this point, and then in the second part, we will work together to improve this scene and make it more enjoyable to walk around in. The reason I am doing it this way is so you can see how environment design is an iterative and sometimes destructive process. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video where we will take a look at how to construct and piece this corridor together.